I'd like to thank FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. So you have finally finished your quilt top. Then you realize that there's a whole new mountain to climb to get it quilted and finished. And starting with the question, what goes on the back? There are many options for what goes on the back of a quilt. This quilting tutorial will be about all you need to know about quilt backing and some of the crucial points that some people might forget. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. We spend so much time, money, and effort making the quilt top that when you sew that last row together, you might think that you're almost at the finish line. I hate to say it, but there's a whole new challenge and expense ahead, making and quilting the sandwich of the quilt top, batting, and backing. I have already made a video about six different ways you can make your quilt sandwich. Some fast and easy quilting patterns and several on the different ways to bind a quilt. This video will be about what you need to know about that bottom layer, the backing. The backing is there to do three things. First, it encloses the batting with the top. You're probably thinking, duh, I knew that one. But even if you don't use batting, the backing is there to protect the quilt top and protect frame. Secondly, and importantly, it is the flat layer that the batting and the quilt top conform to. Tops may have a wave or two that you can massage in while you quilt, but the back must be flat. But the third purpose that we can lose track of is that it needs to be soft against the skin. You can craft the most beautiful quilt in the world, but if it isn't soft, no one will be eager to cuddle underneath it. If you are quilting your sandwich on a domestic sewing machine, the layers can shift against each other while you're quilting causing your top to grow larger than the bottom. To avoid the backing becoming too small, you need at least an additional two inches on all sides, which means your backing is four inches taller and four inches wider than your quilt top. If you are using a long arm, your batting needs to be attached to the frame, which also requires additional fabric. So it's recommended here that your backing is at least four inches larger on all sides, which means eight inches taller and eight inches wider than your quilt top. Now I will be the first to admit that I have tried to get away with less than that. And several times I have succeeded, but it is a real pain when you're short. Not only do you have to stop, find matching fabric, and attach it to the back, it sometimes means that you have to rip out some of your quilting too. So save yourself the grief and just make your backing the full size. It's funny that we judge quilts based on how they look when they're hanging. But in reality, our quilts end up on beds and on couches with our loved ones tucked up underneath them and the back is often flipped over. So the question of color, or rather if it color coordinates with the front, is a personal choice between you and the person you're making it for. And coordination doesn't necessarily mean the same fabric as the front. It can be the same color story, but a totally different pattern or a totally different fabric, or it can be the same fabric line, but a different colorway. It can also play on the same theme, or any variation of these, as long as it's soft and flat. Whether you choose a solid color or a busy pattern for your back, it's more than just a design choice. It's about whether you want your quilting to show. You can highlight or hide your quilting based on these three factors. The color of your bobbin thread, the more contrast with your backing, the more visible it will be. The weight of your bobbin thread, the thicker the thread, the more visible the quilting. And the fabric design, the busier the pattern, the less visible the quilting will be. Just another tip on thread color. The thread on the back doesn't need to match the thread on the front. However, you don't want a lot of contrast between the two. So you can avoid issues when they pop through to the other side. Before we go to the next type, let me tell you about my new FlexiSpot adjustable desk. 
I have had some serious neck and jaw issues this year, and much of it leads back to poor posture. And I have discovered that there is no magic table height for everything that we wanna do. We need one height to sew at, another there to cut at, another to work on your computer. And if you are at a desk all day, you should be alternating standing with sitting. So when FlexiSpot asked me to test out their new Pro Plus standing desk, I said, sure. It came in three boxes and it was fairly straightforward to put together. And the moment it was upright, I was in love. The motor was so smooth, but being able to make height presets was the clincher for me. With my old desk, I had to hand crank the tabletop and then fiddle around as I remembered where it should be. Now with a press of a button, it quickly moves to my desired height. I have them set to sewing, cutting, quilting, and standing. This bamboo top is 55 inches by 28 inches, giving me plenty of room for my sewing machine and large cutting board. I did buy some casters so it can move around as needs be, just like all the furniture in my studio. The good news is that FlexiSpot is having a sale right now with savings up to 50% off. And use my code YTB50 for $30 off any order over $500. If you measure your quilt top dimensions and the smaller number is less than the width of the fabric you wanna use, you only need one length of fabric the size of your quilt plus that four to eight inches. Quilting cotton is around 40 to 43 inches wide. So this will work for most baby quilts and some lap quilts. However, if the smaller dimension is larger, then you will need two lengths of fabric sewn horizontally meaning that you'll need yardage twice the width of your quilt top plus that four to eight inches. It's easy to sew two equal lengths of fabric along the selvages. And you'll hear various variations on how wide that seam should be. The truth is that it can be any width you want it to be, as long as it's consistent. I like to keep the selvages on and sew both pieces together with a seam allowance of one inch. Then I trim off the selvages. Some selvages are larger than others. So depending on the fabric, it leaves me with a seam allowance between a half an inch and a quarter of an inch. And I always press to the side. Now there will be times that you need more fabric than this. It's important to lie your fabric down and take a look at it from across the room. If you have a strong repeating pattern in your fabric, you might want to align the pattern in the top piece with the one in the bottom. When I was making my maple and eucalyptus quilt, my Allison glass backing fabric had a big motif and I knew it would look odd if they were misaligned. But as I looked at it from a distance, I realized that the motif was large enough that I also want it centered in the middle of the back. Yes, it was a bit more work, but it made the back look great. Another situation is when your fabric has a motif that runs parallel to the selvages or has a nap, like a minky or a flannel. Then you will need to piece it vertically, which means that you'll need two pieces the height of your quilt plus that 48 inches. There are online fabric calculators out there if you don't want to do the math, like this one I found at Quilter's Paradise. I'll leave a link to it in the video description notes below. You can absolutely use scraps on the back. For me, after I have worked long and hard on a quilt top, by the time I am finished with the quilt top, I am done with that fabric. So for me, the back is the perfect place to use up those extra blocks, leftover half square triangles, partial fat quarters, and all those cut off strips and crumbs. Not only does it coordinate with the front, it means I need to buy less additional fabric. It also makes the quilt reversible. And I call this the after quilt. And I have already made several videos on how to make one. So if you'd like to try one, I'll leave a link to that playlist here and in the notes below. Just note three things. No matter how many pieces are in your back, it must lie flat. It's a non-negotiable. Plus the added bulk on the back will make custom quilting on the top very challenging. Many long armors will not even take them because of the added fussiness and challenge. And lastly, aligning a pieced back with a pieced front is an advanced skill. 
So if you are not prepared for the added work and frustration, let the stitches fall where they will. Wide backs are fabrics that are 108 inches wide, which makes them perfect for those larger queen and king size quilts. And honestly, sometimes at the end of a project, you just don't have the energy to make a piece back. You can also load a wide back on a long arm and work several small quilts at the same time. You can purchase wide back by the yard or in three yard prepacks. And they come in a variety of fabrics, cotton, flannel, sateen, and batik. Wide backs produce different scraps than regular fabric. These long, narrow strips from the edges are great for binding. If the strips are a bit larger, I reuse them in other quilt backs. And if the strips are a bit larger than that, I cut them into sizes that work as backing in my quilt as you go projects. For every person that says, no, you cannot use sheets as a backing, there are hundreds of quilters out there that are regularly using sheets on the back of their quilts. On the plus side, sheets are probably large enough to cover the back of the size of quilt you're making. They are also economical. Not only are they often on sale, you can often find them at thrift stores. So what makes them a challenge to use? Quilting cotton runs about 80 threads per inch. Sheets run around 200 and up. The higher the thread count, the harder it is for your needle to push through the fabric. And every time you sew two different types of fabrics together, whether they be cotton and flannel, sheets, batiks, or minky, your needle, your thread, and your timing has to accommodate traveling through two different materials. So you may need to experiment with needle and thread combinations until you get the results you want. Scraps from sheets are also different. You have turned edges on every side and often this fancy edge at the top. Do you trim it, use it, or stitch it? And I've heard that sun sheets come with a fragrant sizing that you might want to pre-wash to remove. Quilters use furry fabrics all the time. On the plus side, fleece, faux fur, and minky on the back will definitely be soft and cuddly. And they are usually wider than quilting cotton, like around 60 inches. So you might only need one length of fabric. However, they are not without their challenges. First, you need to check whether your fabric has a nap, because if it does, you want the nap to flow from the top of the quilt to the bottom. Then check for stretch. Choose ones that only stretch in one direction. This minky is very stretchy widthwise, but not along the length. So as you are making your quilt sandwich first or loading it on the long arm, you'll want to work with the non-stretchy direction. And thirdly, this fabric has a pile that you need to stitch through. So you'll want to use a big open quilting pattern to take advantage of it. A dense pattern will tamp it down. So if you want to do pebbling or your quilt top has a lot of small stitches, this might not be the best backing for it. Next, these fabrics make a ton of fluff to the point that you'll want your dust buster and limp brush nearby while you cut it and quilt it. And lastly, when you bind your quilt, it can be tricky to hand sew your binding on from front to back. So you might want to consider machine binding from back to front. I really feel these specialty fabrics need a video all of their own. So if you'd like one, please let me know in the comments below. If you would like to try a piece backing, take a look at my after quilt playlist here. If you need to make a quilt sandwich and quilt it, check out my finish your quilt playlist here too. Take care and I'll see you next time.